Hello everyone, welcome to Chargers TV. Ron Riggs, Justin Bryan alongside you here. And once again, it's great to be in studio, JB, to give the fans and the sponsors a, a bit of a pre-season update once again. Yes, another pre-season update. We'll be focusing in particularly on the women's team this time as they've been hitting the gym and putting in some work. Guys were also there as well, so we'll touch on that a bit. We get an interview with Mark Nash, Kyla McCauley, and of course, the biggest news in basketball in this state for the last 25 years gets a major update as well. Absolutely, that and a whole lot more here on Chargers TV. Right, let's get straight into it then. Uh, great to see the women's team uh, heading into all aerobics last night, JB, and, and they were doing a bit of a, it was a joint session last night between the women's and the men's team where they did a bit of uh, a bit of group exercising and some uh, class stuff as well too. You, myself and, and you were lucky enough to be there last night, JB, and great to see everyone really working hard and uh, getting amongst it. Yes, the group's definitely pushing themselves there as we've highlighted the guys have been going at it hard for the last month and a bit particularly with the all aerobics crew there uh, and the girls have sort of been doing their own sort of work you know amongst themselves you know in different groups and different activities but it's good to see the girls in as a group getting in getting some stuff done and honestly really pushing the limits of themselves and certainly pushing the limits of the guys as well good to see them in there all working out as a team um, and good to see some of the younger ones pushing the seniors mm. seniors pushing the younger ones and uh, for a lot of those girls probably um, their first real taste of a full pre-season as well so it's good to see them getting in there and getting results which is even better uh, absolutely jb great to see everyone in there last night working their backsides off and of course we catch we caught up with Char women's charges head coach mark nash and charges veteran play in kylie mccauley and here's what they had to say it really is. It's a, it's a long pre-season now. It's uh, it's quite strange that we'd be actually probably heading into playoffs in the next couple of weeks. So great to have the team back on court and to have a, a session with uh, the men's program, everyone together. I've been upstairs here and it's really high intensity um, and really exciting to have the players back as a group. Yeah, um, we're pretty excited about um, the upcoming fitness program that's been offered to us. It's been a pretty long time since we've had anything like this. So. Um, just to have such a great gym involved and the fitness sessions, it's really beneficial for all of us. So the Ford stare from Mark Nash and Kylie McCauley and JB, obviously Nash, you're very happy to have the, the women's squad back in and working hard once again. Absolutely. As we mentioned, there's been a lot of focus in the last few weeks in the men's squad. So it's time to get the girls out and about there, you know, and show the world what they're doing as far as the preseason. And they are working their tail off. There's no doubt about that. Last night, as I mentioned, a real mixed group, about eight or nine of the group there, ranging from, you know, rookies and young players such as Matty Stratzma and an Eliza Vanderkamp through to probably your most senior players of the group, and a Kylie McCauley and an Alex Finlayson. And everyone sort of working at their own pace, working through, you know, some pain and some injury but everyone getting results and everyone pushing themselves. It wasn't a matter of just letting the young ones go and doing what they want to do and, you know, staying at their level. It wasn't a matter of the senior players just, you know, pushing everything through the roof. You know, the girls were aspiring to stay on the same track as one another. And again, as I mentioned, Ronnie, lots of good results coming from that as well. I think a big factor in that training group there as well was the fact that they were training with the men. So there was a sense of competitiveness that we're just not going to let the guys who have been running around on camera for the last five, six weeks, you know, struggle their stuff we're not going to let them breeze past us no we're going to show that we have been putting in the hard work we might not be on camera but we have been putting in the hard work and I think some of the girls certainly put the guys to shame there there was a particular challenge there the burpee challenge towards the end uh, as many burpees as you can get uh, in two minutes minute break and then get into it and see whether you can top your feed and there were certainly just as many if not more girls who beat their initial target than the guys so you know I think a full credit and a full shout out there Mark has to be pleased with his results um, and as we mentioned there, this is certainly something different for a lot of these players who really haven't had this uh, mm. during their career on it. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. We spoke to Kylie McCauley and she mentioned to us, JB, that you know, back 10 years ago, this was never around. But you know, fast forward 10 years later, they've got something in place now where they can access these um, benefits that they never once had. It's not a matter anymore of just turning up to training twice a week, getting a bit of physio, making sure you're strapped, you know, getting your doctor's appointments. If you want to train five times a week, you now have no excuse. If you need physio or you need a personal session, you now have no excuse. And that's exactly where the club needs to go forward, both in the men's and women's uh, program. Mark Nash touched on that and we'll touch on it a little later. Hobart needs to become a destination club for Tasmanian players and for younger players wanting to take it to the next level. Hobart needs to be their home and their destination. And the 
the club certainly taken steps in the off season to make it that destination side. And again, I think in doing that, we're encouraging our younger players. You know, we've got a really professional program here. This is where we want to aspire to be. We don't want to look to the mainland or other parts of the state to you know get and reap the benefits of our game. We want to do it here in Hobart. And again, as you mentioned, when Kylie and Alex and alike you know joined the team ten years ago, it was just train twice a week, get a bit of physio if you need it, get strapped at training, blah 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 blah. Well, you know now there's no excuse. It's a full you know full on 100% program you're able to keep your fitness level and again you know shout out to Michelle Chopping who's doing a fantastic job with both groups the whole idea there you know having heard conversations they want the girls to set targets now record where they're at aim for a goal in the pre-season and work towards it to see the progression and that's what they've got to do. It isn't just a matter of, you know, oh, I want to improve my minutes during the season. No, I want to improve my fitness so I can guarantee those minutes, you know, from the start to the end. So, you know, the girls working really hard. They're really, you know, trying to achieve those goals and again, couldn't praise Michelle high enough for the work she's doing with our group. Oh, absolutely. Shout out to Michelle Chopping, our strength and conditioning coach. She's doing absolute wonders with both teams. Let's, uh, and also too, just quickly, thanks to uh, all aerobics, Guy Franklin, Terry Moore, thank you for letting the Chargers use their facility, uh, use your facilities, but also to coming on board uh, to the club as well too, being again another sponsor and a long-term sponsor as, as well too over the years, JB. So great to see uh, a local company uh, really investing time to the charge. This isn't going to be a one-off deal. This is a permanent fix that we want with our brand and within our club. This isn't just a, oh, look, we had a good pre-season, we're going to go back to normal. No, we're trying to set a standard here and then we're going to try and clear that standard. So the idea during this off-season, get everyone as fit as possible, show what you've got to do to get to that next level and go from there. And I think the club started taking, you know, big steps and all aerobics are a major, major contributor to taking those steps as well. So it's great to have them on board. And to some other news now, and of course this has been the big news in the last couple of weeks, JB, that Tasmania will be the 10th franchise in the National Basketball League for the 2021 and the 2022 season. Obviously a great achievement by all and congratulations to all that have been involved in this negotiation with the NBL and JB. For the first time in 25 years, basketball is coming back to Tasmania from an NBL standpoint. Pretty sure I wasn't alive when the last game was played. That would have been close to uh, the February, March, April area of 96, Ronnie, I'm pretty sure. Uh, well, we were running in winter back then, JB. I was not, I was nine when the Devils folded. Oh, well, there you go. I probably still wasn't. I, I wouldn't have remembered it if it did happen, that's for sure. But, I mean, this is a monumental achievement and a massive step forward in making Tasmania a basketball state. Don't worry about footy. Don't worry about soccer. Tasmania will be a basketball state. And not only is it a massive achievement for the state, it's a massive achievement achievement nationally for sport you know many people have asked will we get an AFL team many people have asked we're going to get a netball team are we going to get you know a soccer team Mm. basketball is the team that has been pushed for the last three or four seasons hard to try and get a team here uh, in Tasmania it's finally come to fruition again Ronnie you know I'm a massive hoops fan so it's massive for us and that pathway now all the way from your juniors right through you know to your BTAS, through to your NBL1, right through the NBL. It is now clear. It is now succinct. You don't need to go anywhere else. From a personal standpoint, that's great. I'm a massive Hoops fan, but I know you're a massive NBL fan. Um, you know, it's got to be very gratifying from a personal sense to know that you can now have your own team here in your own backyard and go and check them out. Oh, absolutely, JB. I'm absolutely over the moon with this announcement, and obviously, I don't show that emotion probably enough in this in this um, uh, historic deal that's been made. But I'm very happy that NBL basketball is coming back to Tasmania once again. I'm really looking forward to attending games, watching the team play. I mean, it's very exciting already. There, are, there is a list of names that potentially could be in this team over in the next you know, uh, 12 to 14 months, JB. And, of course, the name. We all wonder what the name will be. So this is going to be a very interesting um, standpoint as well too. So the NBL will come out in the next couple of weeks and have a short list of names, and there's been a lot of suggestions. A lot uh, of average suggestions <laughs> too. Good yeah. suggestions, but some very average suggestions as well so I mean you know and that's going to be a big thing for the marketing department and you know the team itself which is essentially a business it's going to take a lot for the business and the team of the NBL team of Tasmania to get through and sort through I mean everyone loves their nostalgia with the devils everyone wants it to be Tasmanian but it needs to be uniquely Tasmanian you know and I think that's I mean that's going to be it itself you know I think people are going to want the map on the jersey people are going to want it to be a home brand team again the amount of local talent in the NBL or you know in colleges 
leaders and and stuff like that that we want to see in this squad you know that's going to be awesome that's going to be great but it's going to take a lot to get on the floor and that's something that the group will work with um and i think you know particularly from a personal standpoint if they're in touch with the local public and what the public want then this team has you know a basically an endless ceiling about how high they can go uh within the league now ronnie Uh, Absolutely. Once again, congratulations to all involved that made this happen. And no doubt, um, first game is going to be a sellout. I'll call it now, JB. First game will be a sellout. Don't need a crystal ball for that one, Ronnie, I don't think. No, it will be action-packed. It'll be a sellout. Uh, Season tickets will go hotter than the Knicks when they drafted Patrick (laughs) Ewing. Um, Granted, they're not going very hot now, but they certainly went pretty hot back in uh, 85-6 when he was drafted. And I think they'll go just as quick here. You're going to have local businesses jumping on. You're going to have multi you know, interstate companies jumping in. You're probably going to have multinational companies jumping on too, you know, because nothing's going to look better on the resume than saying, hey, look, we sponsored the rebirth of the NBL in Tassie. You know, we provided this, we provided that. You know, and there's plenty of great models around the league for us to work by, plenty of great uh, franchises around the league for us to model by. And I think the big thing that Tassie's going to have is all the successes and all the failures of previous teams, you know, current teams and everything that's going on now, they can all be taken into account. You know, the local markets there. Once all of that's, you know, as I said, I just think the ceiling, you know, the ceiling on this team is, you know, unlimited as to where they can go, the amount of resources that are available. And again, the passionate people that have been behind this team, again, shout out to everyone from the advisory board to BTAS to everyone else in Cumberland and involved. The right people are behind it. The right passion is behind it. Um, and I just think it's you know it's going to be a success. I mean, five years is I believe what the initial term is looking at at the moment. Well, you know, in five years, you know, we want to be one of the biggest clubs uh, in the league. There's no doubt about that. So again, I think the ceiling on this team is unlimited, uh, and it's very very exciting to see where it goes. Absolutely, and we caught up with Chargers president Brett McKay just to get his thought on the announcement. Yeah, it's fantastic news, Ronnie, for the whole of the state, for basketball in the entire state, but also the state's economy. Having the 10th licence and the commitment to get in the season for the 21-22 is going to help kickstart the building industry as well after the uh, coronavirus. But mainly for where we're interested in, which is the basketball, it puts us back in the National League. 25 years since Tasmania's had a team, and now we're back, and we're going to show what Tasmania can do. So, fantastic news. We must congratulate the LK Group, the State Government, the Glenorchus City Council, and everyone else involved in in the whole process. It's just just fantastic news for the entire state. At the moment, that's a hard question to answer. Um, I've made contact with uh, Larry Kesselman this morning to see... Um, to try to arrange a meeting to see where the Chargers and the NBL1 teams fit in with this NBL franchise. Look, we stand ready to assist where we can and how we can. Uh, In saying that, though, we are an NBL1 team. This is NBL, and the Chargers do need to be looking after the Chargers' interest as well. But we are fully supportive and committed to help out where we can to make this happen. So the thoughts there from Hobart Chargers President Brett McKay and JB, obviously uh, Brett mentioning there that the Chargers will will do the best that they can to assist wherever they can. But of course, the focal point for the Chargers is to make sure that we take care of ourselves at the same time. Oh, absolutely. And I think this is another perfect opportunity for the Chargers to again capitalise and go to that next level on, you know, from a professional standpoint. We're doing it now in the off season and wanting to keep, you know, players, you know, intact, you know, fit and to the best of their ability. But now the real focus for us is going to be during the season, you know, while the NBL club is obviously going to be a destination, the idea is to, we want to keep these players. You want to come and, you want to come and play in the NBL team, that's fine. How about you come and hang with us in the off-season yeah. as well? You know, I mean, how many times did Anthony Stewart mention it this year? We had the likes of our Harry Froling, we had your, uh, was it Christian Jurelina, yep. we had Tad Duffelmeyer. Yep. You know, they were our three major big off-season signings. Um you know, and they're all three guys. I mean, Froling, a former Rookie of the Year. Juralina really pushing it um, in Queensland. Yep. Tad Duffelmeyer playing minutes for Cairns. You know, yep. our starting five is really shaping up as a starting five that could be, you know, potentially a reserve or, you know, a couple of starters playing in the NBL. Well, you know, we didn't even have a team when that, when those, when that was announced. So, you know, the attraction now to get people to Hobart is easily there. 
And again, you know, the Chargers need to look after themselves as well. There's no doubt about that. There needs to be that understanding that, you know, you want to come down. You know, we want to keep these players in. We want to keep them local. Uh, and we want to, you know, make this a whole family environment. We don't want it seen as, oh, they're just flying in for the NBL gig and, oh, well, they can't be stuffed with the Chargers. No, Chargers are going to become a destination club, men's and women's. And again, this NBL announcement is just as good. As I mentioned in the women's, the big thing there was the WNBA t potential talent coming forward and your senior WNBL players wanting to be here. Well, the attraction now for the Chargers is the NBL team. That big carrot's dangling there, but look, you're off-season. You're set. You can become a permanent resident. You don't need to worry about flying, fly out. It's the perfect setup and the perfect time for the Chargers to capitalise. And I think considering the work that Brett and his board and everyone around the club's doing... I I think it's going to be, you know, almost a uh, almost a free throw, so to speak, so to speak, Ronnie. I really think the club can do it. I think they can capitalise, and I don't see why it can't happen. Oh, well, there you go, the thoughts there from JB. All right, our last bit of news, and this is around one of our former assistant coaches, JB, and of course, uh, that former assistant coach is Nathan Burton, and he has been appointed to the role as Northern Basketball Development Officer of Basketball Tasmania. And we just want to send our best wishes to Nathan and say, and say, well, well done on the appointment, and we just want to say good luck going forward in that role. Uh, Nathan's been doing a lot with our FDP SDP programs for Basketball Tasmania. As a network coach, he's been uh, lucky enough to be a state under 20 uh, men's head coach as well too, and has done a lot of work um, with our athletes, but then also too has had the opportunity to go to Canberra to the Centre of Excellence and do a bit of stuff there with our national junior athletes, JB. And great to see uh, a Hobart local uh, getting an opportunity uh, in one of these roles that really um, the last few years have been a lot of interstate people, but great to see Derm getting getting the role here. Absolutely. And again, you know, former Chargers assistant coach was the assistant coach for the championship winning team of 2018. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and Derm's also spent a little bit of time in the United States with other ventures as well. So he's, no doubt he's had some exposure and some experience over there. Um, a great appointment, a smart appointment. Um, one of the better, you know, junior, well, which you would say one of the better junior and up and coming mm -hmm. um, leading coaches, not only in Tasmania, but certainly across the country. So, you know, I think the Northern athletes are really going to have to relish this opportunity because um, Nathan's got experience everywhere and we are filming this on the Friday coincidentally so happy birthday um, shout out to you Dermot it is his birthday oh, today <laughs> so thanks to Facebook for the reminder but I mean pretty good bloody birthday present you know jumps into that role shout out to Bradley Khan who served that role mm. um, well himself but it's going to be great to see Derm involved getting amongst it and again you know seeing that pathway again this isn't a matter of um, you know, that's another pathway to look at from a coaching standpoint for locals. It isn't a matter of, oh, you're only going to cap out at a local roster. You're only going to cap out coaching juniors. No, mm -hmm. there are the steps that can be taken to go to that next level. Um, and, you know, everything falling in line at the moment with all the clubs around the state, the NBL and everything going on. It's great to see, you know, Nathan showing there is that pathway for coaches as well. You don't just have to be a player, you know, to move up the ranks and, you know, fulfil a career in basketball. Uh, absolutely. Again, uh, congratulations to Naif and uh, all, all the best going forward. Uh, we'll take a break and we'll come back with more right after this. I don't know the words, but me and Terry were supposed to do a collab. A collab? Yeah, we were supposed to, me and Terry were supposed to do a collab, so I'm a little upset. Okay. But we got the win, so that just cancels everything out. And welcome back. Now, don't forget to follow the Hobart Chargers on all of their social media to stay up to date with what's going on with the club. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And you can subscribe to the YouTube channel to stay up to date with all the goings on here at the Hobart Chargers. Now, unfortunately, Ronnie's just had to duck out. He's got a phone call, so he's currently in the studio offices catering for that. And that's pretty much all we've got time for here on Chargers TV. But now, hang on a second. I'm not the only person you've now got to put up with. This is some sort of miracle here, ladies and gentlemen. You're not going to believe who's here. He's been working his backside off. Coming into the studio, this is unbelievable stuff. It's, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is Rex the Rhino. It's uh, good to see you, Rex. You, uh, how do you feel? Hang on. What are you doing, Rex? Oh, yeah, that's key too. We'll just uh, we'll straighten, your, straighten your frame up a bit there. There you go. Adlib TV at its best. So, Rex, how are you feeling? Now, is it true that you are putting in a pre-season as well, Rex? Are you a little bit sore? Thumbs up, right? Oh, there we go. We're going well. Now, is Michelle training you? Has she given you much instruction? Here, I'll ask you a few questions. You just give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. We good? Are uh, we still on the McDonald's and the KFC, Rex? We're down on that, are we? Are uh, we on to the vegetables and the fruits, Rex? Are uh, we getting in some extra exercise, Rex? 
Are we going to see a new and improved Rex the Rhino heading into the uh, 2021 NBL1 season? There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Rex is working as hard as anybody, pumping iron, doing the weights. We'll try and get a little bit there. Uh, Rex, you've certainly been working out a bit and uh, sweating up a storm, I see. Absolutely, that's the way. There we go. He's pretty happy. Bit of battle robe action there as well. We'll get that as well. Bit of boxing, a bit of running, some squats, everything. You name it. Rex has got it. He's uh, busting his backside, ladies and gentlemen. You and improved. You uh, you wait. Rex is going to turn some heads at our opening night for uh, 2021. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that'll be the debut of uh, Rex the Rhino here on Chargers TV. On behalf of Ronnie Riggs, it's JB, and we'll uh, see you later.